Bag fuel, baby. Oh, I like the way we started before we started. He's like, yo, Esso, you don't want a job in the industry. Why would you Whoa. say that on camera, bro? <laughs> I, I didn't. Well, Heineken did. Yeah, I know. I'm talking about him. Like, why would you say that on camera? That's not true. If y'all got enough money, come pay me. That I'm, ain't the right I'm, approach yeah. either. <laughs> so what's the approach? Because you're the one that got the job, so you yeah. tell them to give me the job. That's the right approach. The approach is just kind of let the work speak for itself. Well, it's speaking for itself. Man. Exactly. But Good. at the same token, uh -huh. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I got to, I got to approach too. Like, I uh -huh. think we all got a certain like quality of Dame Dash in us. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Where it's just certain people like. I'm a Virgo, you know what I'm Me saying? Too. He's talking about Ray Daniels, he a Virgo, you a Virgo. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just certain niggas that just come across, like, harshly. But to me, it's like, I don't give a fuck how the message was delivered as long as it meant well and it got us to where we was trying to go and it, like, sealed the deal. But in corporate world, mm -hmm. you know, you got to, you know. So you're saying I'm harsh, basically. Is that what you trying to say nicely? No, I just think that you don't, you, you have an element in you that I don't have as well. Like, I can't phony kick it. Yeah. So I'm that. really trying to, like, you know, like, bring it back to, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you have to play the game a little bit, you know? I got you. If really? you in a league, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you you might carry a gun every day, but you can't go John Morant. <laughs> That's true. You say you can't go John Morant. The shots are y'all. Yeah, I mean it's true, but so what's going on with you, my guy? Because you, because you, you wasn't doing podcasts and YouTube shows. Right. Now I seen you more on podcasts and YouTube shows. Right? What's the purpose? You just using it to 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 launch your product, or you want to get your own vibe out? Nah, I just think that I'm one of the like few people that are in a position to where it's like I've worked hard enough to where like I'm successful enough to where I can really portray and like speak for the ones that's been through the stuff that we've been through or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm coming from a younger perspective that's doing it in real time with all the people that I have going on. And like a lot of people don't know, like how you just said, I got the job. A lot of people don't know how I work behind, you know, work with record companies for the last seven years. Yeah. So mm -hmm. at this point, you know, like I just want to shine a light on like, we know I'm a successful producer. I just want to give back and go to the next lane and to the next level of what we really got going on and empower the next people because, as we all know, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. So the best play is to always put the next person in position to where you can really build from. So let me ask you a question because you feel like um, when I'm telling people what's up, I might be telling them too much what's up, pulling the curtain back or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But what I would tell the record labels is, now you know people that have that they have more knowledge about what they're coming into that could possibly make them that much more successful if they know what they have to come in and deal with because most of the time they're coming in blindly and they don't know about the politics they don't know about 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 the dinners and the grimy right. stuff that you got to go to and the campaigning that you got to go through because that'd be a lot of times why they don't make it they they coming in this situation thinking that they're just going to make music and throw it out and it's going to work mm -hmm. To me personally, my brother, I think that you have all the information, you have all the intel, and you've seen it from like, like I remember, like I remember back in the day. Do you remember when fucking um Rockwaller was doing like a uh, barbershop two soundtrack and all the other shit? He of was course. in L.A. with Troy Carter and all that shit. Like mm -hmm. I remember from those eras and all mm -hmm. the other shit. You've seen every like angle of it, mm -hmm. and it's just like just because you got the information, mm -hmm. don't mean you got to expose it all. You know what I'm saying? Like up front, you just supposed to know and make it work for yourself. The same way these white folks doing with us, bro. That could be the case, right? Uh -huh. But mm. coming from you came from a totally different way than I did. Mm. You came through a talent way, right? right? So you was a writer, you was a rapper, mm. you was doing other shit. Mm. Now you know me as a manager, and being a manager, I was always, I was, I'm not gonna say I was one of the most radical managers out. Right. Everybody knows that. Right. You know what I'm saying it was no secret. But beyond that, when you're fighting as a manager is totally different than fighting when you got really real talent. Because mm -hmm. people are fighting to take your stuff away. They blackball you out the game for no reason, mm -hmm. for for you messing with a chick or you got a check that they were supposed to get. Anything that they'll blackball you out, right? That happened to me. Right. So all, all, all these people that I, I learned to survive without having to deal with that bullshit. Right, and then I see everybody else dealing with the bullshit, and it's one, it's one or two ways. You can be radical and get paid like I did, mm -hmm. right? 
Or you can just go with the flow and take your chances. And I've seen a lot of people that didn't make it by going with the flow. A couple of them do kiss ass. I'm not going to name y'all names on camera. You, I'm sure you know. They do slip through the cracks. But it's, mo it's mainly the people who put their foot down. You, you don't agree? I think there's some truth to that. But I think that from a management standpoint, mm -hmm. and this is where I do um, really like understand the perspective that you're coming from because the manager is probably the most dispensable person in, yep. the, in the business. So um, mm. you could work, you know, and management might be the hardest job in the yep. music business as well because mm. you're pretty much adopting a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't even think that it's about a management too because I, I see it with um, my, like, it's a lot of people that operate on that. Like, I think that as far as management goes, now in 2024, I will redirect it to be more partnership. Yes. Like, I'll act as a manager, but I have to have a bigger role in your career. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, if we build mm -hmm. a company, then I'm the vice president, president. of this company or whatever, mm -hmm. and we split the money like you this or whatever. To, you yeah, sign yourself so, to us and stuff and like that. Even if we part ways on <clears throat> management, there's a way for us to do that. Now, mm -hmm. the other people, the more business-minded people that are not operating out of love and just find a true talent will put, like, the sunset clause inside the management okay. agreement mm -hmm. to where it's like, yo, for the next two years, I don't care if you fire me or the next four I'm years, get paid. I'm getting 20% of this shit. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if you go hire a motherfucking uh, Irvin Azoff, nigga, yeah. you, you breaking up 40% now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But in reality, I don't think that that's how careers started and like how we really invest into talent because we find shit at a grassroots level yes. and we just can see something because I come from the era when it wasn't no social media. Mm -hmm. So, like, that might be my Achilles heel and a lot of things with being a CEO and being a creative to the new generation is because, like, I'm not looking for motion. I'm looking for shit that move me. Mm -hmm. Niggas looking for motion. I'm looking for shit that move me. Because if talent. it move me, then I know it's something I can grab a hold to and I can move forever with, like, a lot of shit is just temporary satisfaction, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that don't work for nothing. You know, you came in super young, hit records, everybody knows your face. Right. What did it take for you to control, I don't want to say ego, but your the energy of now you're almost like creating records for other artists right. where you could just really take them songs and put your face out there again. How do you control that? Man, you know, I'm a work in progress every day. Yeah. You know, I don't think that nobody should get on these type of platforms and be like, I got it all figured out or whatever. And that's mm. what I encourage all the CEOs of these companies to do and, and, say, and say and be more vocal about. And be like, you know, like, it's weird when you can go to a somebody like, so an artist may sign to a major record company, right? Mm -hmm. Or an artist may sign to me. Now, here's the, the, the upside of signing with me. You sign with me. I'm a plug and play type nigga. Mm. If you got a pen and you coming in with some shit, then you could be Ronnie with 30 placements mm -hmm. and on Chris Brown album and mm -hmm. on the deluxe of Chris Brown album before you drop your project. Yeah. Or you sign with a major record company, I guarantee you the CEO of that company is gonna, when you go to them and say, hey, what's the marketing plan? What are we doing? They're just gonna say, content. Just keep putting out content. Keep putting out content. Everybody doing the spaghetti rule. Like, you know, let's boil a bunch of shit. Let's just do it and throw it at the wall. And whatever stick, sticks, it sticks. Mm -hmm. And that's not a real marketing strategy. I don't think that any of us sitting around in this interview right now is just like can relate to that. Because I know I was there in those meetings with these same people, the Mike Kaisers, um, Julie Greenwald, Jazz Young. Like, I was signed to DMX Bloodline. So I watched them. Like, I mean, the meeting that Dane walked in on Jay-Z was a marketing meeting. Mm -hmm. When he like CEO playing a marketing plan was me like see like that's what really was going on. Yes. So I just think with social media and TikToks and different things, it kind of put in perspective to where like they take the they don't give a like they I don't mean, give a fuck. I mean they don't have to right because right. one they're making the music faster than right. we ever made it, uh -huh. right? They're putting it out faster than we ever made it. They're mixing it inside their house and there's nobody to pass it to to say it's whack or it's not. Right then, there's no more collaborations. You're getting paid still to this day because you collaborate with right. people. Hell yeah. Your whole being is about I'm gonna collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna collaborate with you. Mm -hmm. We we do that with Potten. Right. We collaborate with whoever. We come on your show. You come on our show. We share turn collaboration. We turn up everywhere we go. You know right. what I'm saying? But I think that what's lost 
in this whole situation is that power of the collaboration. It's too easy to get the records done. Right. It's too many ways to have these whack beats. I, I, I'm in <laughs> sessions and niggas don't even compress their drums. Right. So I'm like, you're not stacking and you're not compressing your drums. And they're like, well, how, how do you know about that? I managed Rock Wilder for 10 years. What you think I was doing? Right. Playing? Right. I was paying attention to everything that's going on. I, I'm, me and Jimmy is in the studio trying to find beats for people, and I'm kicking beat niggas out the room. You're like, it's my shit. Like, Legend. yo, bro, you got to get out of here with that trash. Legend. So how are they, they going to survive? How is the label surviving with all of that trash coming through, and then they mixing it with somebody like you who knows about quality of music? How the fuck does that balance out? It just depends on what the the... The choice of such label is, you know, and who's at the helm of it and who's trying to like drive the ship. I think it varies with every record company because when you really put it in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. We like, like it's a lot of shit that's like bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. But like, you'll be programmed to like the bullshit. Cause it's the best of the trash. Like oh, I keep saying, nah, it's just gr it's the gram, it's technology or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like TikTok. How yeah. many times have you seen something that was a short clip of like thirty seconds, like, and you were like, "Damn, I'm fucking with this," and but it didn't happen song. to like twenty, like two minutes and thirty seconds into the song. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, damn, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's hard to really skew it, and then it's being devil's advocate because also working with a record company, it's like. You in a position to where it's kind of like, do you miss out on what's happening and what's going on? Or you mean money wise, financially? I mean, everybody that works for a record company is putting up numbers to, to make your money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But for, but it's for a mystery person that doesn't even, you don't even know that you never met. Like <laughs> the person that owns Atlantic Records is not Craig Calvin or mm -hmm. Julie Greenwald. Exactly. So, I mean, we know the name. I won't say it, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But it's like, you're not somebody that See, works I would have said it, and that's what he's telling me not to say. Yeah. Exactly. But somebody <laughs> that works for Universal is not, you know what I'm saying? Like, working to appease the person that's at the helm of that company, Sir, too. working to appease, appease sir. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, but you mentioned him, Chris Brown. I don't want to, because, you know, you've been through so much shit. Uh -huh. You. What's the residual you deal with? Because when the whole situation happened with Chris Brown, we tend to be like, all right, that's in the past, but we don't ever think that people still will harbor resentment or look at you a different way. What do you deal with from your past still that are like hurdles? Nothing? You good? Uh, oh, you getting money, nigga? Nah, I'm just not <laughs> at like, I think that when you're an artist and when you're behind the scenes, there's two different levels to things, you know? Mm. Like, um, Chris is... I think one of the greatest, hands down, he's the Michael Jackson of our generation. Mm -hmm. Like, and something that, you know what I'm saying? Like, he might be facing different adversities, but like, man, to be honest, like, mm. I'm just at a point to where, man, when you at ghost status and legend status, man, just go, I think he's 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 letting you know he going where he accepted now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like, he not going where he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he doing what's best for him. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to be where I'm tolerated. I want to be where, I, you know what I'm saying, people want me to be. So it's just that type of vibe. But CB is hands down the greatest probably of all time of my generation. Do you think that if you decide to rap on records, it, it could help no, break I wouldn't do it. some of these people? Really? Now? I wouldn't do it. But you don't think that it, it could help? I still I still rap. I still write raps for yeah, people mm -hmm. and I still actively are throwing lines and coming up with creative ideas, but at the same token, why would I do that? I think that's moving backwards in my career. I think that would be a self like fulfilling thing. That would be like maybe if I was like, see, I don't even want to start talking like that. Uh, no, <laughs> don't, yo, don't, 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 <laughs> maybe if you was like who? <laughs> Maybe if I was like ugly or like, you know what I'm saying? Or a nigga that ain't had enough pussy. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 that really know what you we know. We just what talked saying? about, we just talked oh, about man. people want to get famous because they want pussy. Yeah. And I say that respectfully. Like, that's I'm true. not really No, that's real like shit you just said. Yeah. Like, maybe if I didn't have as much access to, to females as I had in my career as being a rapper, because all my songs was about women, like the business is Chicago slang for fucking. And like I like girls still hit me on Twitter like I was in seventh grade and I was thinking of giving the business I was like damn like I ain't was trying to be on that but like it, I've I've always been like a, a a ladies man type of person. Does that backfire for you because you was just going viral for your situation? 
I mean it all way. I'm 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 I mean, growing and I'm living my life in front of real time. So if you get one incident out of three years of nothing happening, you know what I'm saying? Like does this it bother is just, you though? No, nah, hell no. Nah. Do you look at it as promo? Uh in this era? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's never promo because honestly, it affects so many different people. So when somebody picks up the phone and you got something that's going on that's disturbing, mm -hmm. then your family knows about it. And it might not be at that big of a level to you, mm -hmm. but it just affects so many different people. And in the leadership position I'm in, like I'm just trying to keep my face clean at all times without, you know, affecting the people that I got by coming up behind me. You know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Pauls? Because like this is a big situation. You know, this ain't about hitmaker no more. It ain't about Youngberg no more. It ain't about Christian no more. It's about putting on for the next, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And always like having a real platform and learning the information that we learn and we the game we've been through the, and just trying to go there. Because, I mean, we we know you a ladies man because we've known you for years. Don't Independent. say we. I don't know nothing. You, oh, you don't, don't know? Oh, you wasn't around, right? Me. That's my don't past. Don't oh, that's your past. Yeah, I don't but know. now, because even when that whole situation happened, I'm like, we in such a sensitive time. Mm -hmm. Anything could be looked at crazy. So I'm like, oh, and then you had to come there and speak your piece just to make sure everything was right. Yeah, but in reality, like, um, with that situation, I personally think that, man, it's just the time. It's 2024. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just what it is. So I can't really go and, like, complain about it when I when I watch certain shit or whatever. Like, it, when it ain't me, I'm watching it. You know what I'm saying? Are you and enjoying like, the circus? Not really enjoying it, but, like, uh, damn. You damn know what news saying? right so, now. It's how you find out what's so going on. So when it on. is me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to move accordingly and move correctly. You know what I'm saying? And, and try not to be in those situations. What made you mature? Success. Mm-hmm. So you think you got lucky no. and then got successful and no. then you mature? Because most niggas got to mature first to be successful. I think and keep it. Don't like, don't nobody work harder than me. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I I put my own money on the line. I do my own thing, and I'm in the studio literally six days a week. Like, still, mm -hmm. like with selling a hundred and thirty-seven million records and fucking. Uh, 14 billion streams and the number one album in the country right now we got five songs on it and i'm sitting here having an interview with y'all right now mm -hmm. putting on for the next thing like you know like this is not like this is my life this is all i know i sacrificed everything and that's what i don't think that people really bring in and, and really embrace like to really be in this shit you're gonna lose a piece of yourself definitely shit. i lost a lot of myself like yeah. i don't have no kids i don't have no girl like i don't have a personal life like, this is my life. So I don't know anything but this. That's a fact. You just, mm. made, you, you just put me in the zone. I was just talking to him about it. Like, I just tell people right now, like, all I do is work That's it, and go home. Yeah. There ain't no time because my body needs to rest for, for whatever the next haul is. And me managing, it, it was totally different. You tired. And I, I, I didn't realize how, how, how much that you need to keep your mind clear. Mm-hmm. When you when you're trying to be creative, I'll fucking play one song 48 times until I come on camera because that just puts me inside the right zone for for me to think. What puts you in your zone to think when you creating your your music and your vibe? I mean, look, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Like, it's not no secret code. I've been doing this shit so long. Mm -hmm. I just go in. I got the right engineer. Mm -hmm. I got the right studio. I got the right collaborators that I work with. Shout out to my business partner, first and foremost, Chris Sean, who is like my number one go-to. Then it's other collaborators, Ronnie, Imani, just people that can see the vision out that I work with or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like we don't see, there's the difference between how you worked and okay. with Rockwell as a producer and how I work. Because, it, and there's some similarities too, because okay. I, mm. I watch your interviews and I hear about the girls that was, um, that was writing songs with rock, and you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I forget the names Big or whatever. Draws. Exactly. So, every song that you probably heard from me is a demo that's on my phone that we did previously, and I go and I present the song to artists. And with that being said, the artist goes and dissects the song, whether it's a rap song, it might be a hook just on the song. And I'm like, yo, let's make this hook fit you. I think it fits you, but I'm sure that you could take something away, this line, take that, you know what I'm saying? Make it your own. If it's an R&B song, it's probably the whole song done. And we do like one verse, one hook, the hook mm, and a verse, and leave, leave the second verse open. Leave it open. So the artist can go and, and, and paint. 
Gotcha. After that, you know what I'm saying. So, so is that a key for you thinking selling your your records that you give them the the main part, but you giving them a, a way to be creative with you as as well? Um, I think that you get the most creative with me when when I executive produce your album because now mm. it's not like a me giving you the song. Like a lot of people, I'm like a plug and play. You know what I'm but saying? Ain't that like expensive, I, huh? Ain't that expensive to, to get you the executive produce album? Yeah. So who can pay for that? Because you say a lot of people. Because you act like it's 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 just, it's just simple. Well, if I executive, well, I'm executive album. producing six albums that's coming out this year. I think last year I executive produced maybe four or five. Okay. Who who you who you um executive producing for? I mean, the main person I'm executive producing for is is my girl Tink. Okay. So I'm really excited mm-hmm. about her her new album, Winner's Diary Five, is about to come out this year, and we got some of the greatest features on there. We got some of the greatest work and I'm super excited about that. But I've executive produced multiple people's albums. Tip, uh, what Libra Scale album, uh, fucking um, Jim Jones, our last project. Mm-hmm. Eric mm-hmm. Millinger, his um, biggest, his last project we just mm-hmm. did or whatever. Is, he had a top 10 records off that. So, I mean, it just spreads out everywhere. And then there's <clears> a lot of upcoming artists that can enlist me to do that type of service or whatever and the label believes in them and I just wrap my arms around them. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, w- w- you're a plug and play guy, but is there any artist you're looking at like, yo, if we get this dude in the studio with me, it's gonna work? Like, like a wish list almost. Not a wish list, but like, I don't know. I work with everybody, bro. Mm. So it, to me, it's just about the new. It probably somebody that we don't even know yet. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that is coming up, or the artist that I got signing me. Like I got Ronnie signing me with Make It Sound. Me and my partner Chris Sean, and then Toy Ann, who is like. To me, Toyan is about to shake the world along with Ronnie. She's from Jamaica. She does something that's really different, that's really exciting. And her project is full of features as well as Ronnie's. You know who I think you could work well with? The one you helped get the deal, Honey Baby. I love Honey Baby. Yeah. I think she's a star. That's what I said. That's why they got her the deal, because they bought it to me. And I was mm-hmm. like, I think she's a star. Next thing you know, they, oh, well, you think she's a star? <laughs> yeah. They got a deal in less than a month. And I was like, and I called them back to be like, yo, what's up? Oh, I we we wanted you to manage her and all. I was right. like, I don't want to manage them. I don't got no do time. It? I don't got no time to manage. If, I, if I'm a manage, right, mm-hmm. it got to be a good situation. I can't, they, they need to have a, a whole nother manager with them that can be there day to day yeah. and use me for the connections and use me for my knowledge. So you get 10% the day to day get 10%. Yeah, but nobody's, like, people want it, but I, I, I think that they're scared to approach me. Like, there's so many people that are scared to approach me about money. You know what I'm saying? Are you open, though? Yeah. Do you, think, do you think that the energy that you give off would, would, would let people feel like, like, man, I might not want to approach SO. Like, he ain't with, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Nah, nah. I just, I, to be honest here, I'm not around a lot of people no mm-hmm. more, right? And then the people that approach me. Nigga, you around the whole world, bro. We watching nah. you on fucking YouTube every day. <laughs> what are you that, talking that, about? That, you don't be yeah, understanding. Like, that, <laughs> that, that, I'm, I, 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 I be by myself a lot, right? right. And I, I think that people know I have a standard. So you have to come to me correct. It's not about who you are. You can't be messy. I don't have time right. for messy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I, and I exude that. Don't come fuck with me if you don't got your shit together. Right. And that's what I think that that's what people, they don't have their shit together. Then they want me to help them get it together, but they have no way to compensate me. No, like a honey baby. Do- yeah, I, that's I mean, a good look. I think that that's something that you could, Mac, you could get into. But K Mac is if K Mac would have told me okay. he was willing to travel with her like he's doing, then I would do it. Shout out to K Mac. Shout out K-Mac. to K Mac. But yeah. K is doing the whole job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's doing the whole job because you know what happened with the other artist that he signed. That she that they got some money. She blew up, and it's like she makes a lot of money. They make a lot of less money. If she doesn't put out a project, they right. don't get an override to make more money. Right. I didn't want to be caught up in, in that type of thing. So if 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 it, if it would have been something where yo take the calls, make it happen, fly out when you can. Of course, of course, I would do that. But yeah. people gotta know what they need. They don't even be knowing what they need because because they call me like, well, what do you need? I, I just need to get on. It's bigger than that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I get approached with. Or it's an older person right. that that wants to, me to help them bring them back to the light type of thing. Right. And it's like with the people that I, I deal with, the DJs from this and that, they're mm. not dealing with no older artists. They right. can't because this station isn't going to permit it. Right. So now I'm in a twilight zone. I do want to help you, but 
what I got going on right now might not help you. It, it'll help somebody new, somebody young. See, but to me, mm. the perspective that I would tell you is like, maybe overextend yourself. Like, I think with like one of these artists not saying this Honey Baby or somebody that mm -hmm. you believe in, they got that type of momentum. Because speaking of Honey Baby, like how you said, mm -hmm. like, before I heard the music, anything, like her energy is just like, I'm Oh, no, star. she's up, bro. She's different. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I hope Atlantic Records do right by her. You know what I'm saying? I think she's amazing, incredible, and um, fucking maybe that's the that's the end. You br help break an artist, maybe at a lower cost than what mm -hmm. you want to make, and then you you prove that proof I, of concept, and then you in the building. You know what I'm but, saying? But so I'm actually, like, but I'm actually, we just talked about that. I just told K told me that Jimmy told me that they like yo. Once you get somebody signed again. Your whole thing is going to change. Right. And I've been scared. Like, I'm I'm actually quietly doing it. Right. But I've been scared to say it on camera because so many people are on the riffraff being his DMs. On my <laughs> neck about music. So I'm like, I'm telling everybody, no, no, I'm not doing music. And this keeps being flooded. So I'm like, if I actually Free tell those and files, brother. Even it's if I'm actually telling them. Brother, free those and files. I'm not Come mad with at it. that. I'm actually but thinking about it, it though. How, how do you stay, how are you able to keep current hit songs on the radio because we've seen artists right. they tend I don't want to say lose it but they can't keep up with the current trend of the music but it seems like whoever you write for right. no matter what the time frame is you got hit records on the radio which right. is trending um, to me it's just more so like how y'all SO and we were talking about earlier it's more so collaboration mm -hmm. so the producers of our time that we love they got caught up into a sound like you know what i'm mm. saying like and it was like we go to such and such for this sound or we go to such and such for this sound but with me the way i collaborate i co-produce with everybody that's hot in the moment so there's no way for me to kind of like fall off so mm -hmm. if i see the next guy that's going crazy it's like yo let's Let's link up. Gotcha. Let's share experience. Let's share. Let's share information. Let's let's collaborate together. Whatever. So it's not based in my sound. Now I did actively come out with a sound. Probably like it's not a sound or whatever. It's just something that was nostalgic and something I grew up on. And that was probably like probably when I first started working with Atlantic. So I think that was seven years ago. I set out and I'm like, yo. I'm going to be the diddy of this generation. I was about to say you were sampling. I was yeah. about to say. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was, I was letting yeah. you do it. I was like, this nigga was sampling crazy. Yeah. And you know what you caused? Yeah. And all these other bullshit. niggas. Yeah. Now all these other yeah. niggas is doing it. Yeah. And every, yo nigga, I'm listening to niggas' whole projects because mm -hmm. they call me now. I'm like, every record is a fucking sample. Yeah. And not a not a chop sample, but, a blatant but look, sample. For me, for me though, you know how crazy that feel to be young Berg and then to say, yo, consciously, like, yo, I'm finna reinvent myself. I'ma come out and I'ma do this and then to watch a trend like start. Like, that's some of the things that was like unreal to me. Cause like when you doing it in real time and you mm -hmm. working as much as we do and there's so much feet on the ground, it's like you not really like, I'm not paying attention to radio. Right now we got five records on radio and urban we got uh, in the top 40 or whatever we got i got a top 10 record right now i got a fucking top 40 record i got a top 10 record with in a dope ac like mm -hmm. in every chart possible at radio currently to to this day we got the number one album on billboard hot 200 and on radio every chart possible whether it's the white folk station the black folk station, the urban station, the rhythmic, the the, the light skin station, or the motherfucking <laughs> the old man. head station. I got a record going on all that Yo, shit at the same time. Let me let me say this. Our, our, our fellow Virgo sister hit the country music scene. So right. so did T Pain. Mm -hmm. Is that oh, a, a, a pipeline for you? Country I mean, music hit maker. Come on. I would I would if it was asked upon. But like man, I ain't gonna lie. Like it's so much like. Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and Babyface and L.A. Reid just like bleeding out me. Like yeah. I'm not leaving where I'm at. You know I'm, what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not saying to leave. What, what I don't even want to do it. Like I want to change. He can't because you know what he's like to me. Mm -hmm. And people gonna bug out. He's the modern age Corey Rooney. See, Co yeah, that's that's see, and because I spent so much time with Corey. Shout out to mm -hmm. Queens, Corey. Rooney. Yeah, shout out to my borough, Southside Jamaica, to be exact. Is where Corey's from. Mm -hmm. Um. Corey did the same thing. 
And the reason why I say that you're the modern day Corey, because Corey is one of the few people who people realize who people don't realize he was really the vice president of Sony. Right. He really did vice president duties mm -hmm. from the studio. Mm -hmm. So he was cutting checks for other people on projects. He was bringing people in. He has creative forces and, and juices along. And once once people jumped on that train, just as managing Lauren Dawson and Troy at that time, I made more money than I ever did. Right. Mm. Off of J Lo, Genuine. Shit like that. Speaking we selling nine million, million shit, 20 right. million records worldwide. It's unheard of. But there is not another Corey. When we had Corey on the show, I said, yo, like, there's not another one. But as I watch you, if you can be in that spot that you're in until you're 50, 60 years old. Effortlessly. If you're, because you're willing to bring in people like Ron and all these other people to actually collaborate and put their vibe down, and you're not staying stuck in, in, in a time warp. Mm -hmm. Now... Mm -hmm. And this is on camera now. If you right. had somebody that you was fucking with, huh? and you called me, me knowing that you understand what's going on right now, and you said, "Oh, well, we about to do the deal for this nigga. I need to, you could do, then I oh, could do oh, it." Oh, oh, we about to do the uh, deal done for this nigga. Uh, okay, uh, you know what okay, uh, whatever. <laughs> then, right, let, let's crank it yeah, up a notch. Right, then, you know, let's start there. We could try that. <laughs> I'm not gonna. We could try that, but that's the situation that I'm talking about because not mm. only would he understand why I'm coming in, you're guiding him, and you would help him understand, and yeah. it would be teamwork with the person he signed to, not just me managing Rogue. Right. Yeah. That's now that's a situation that I feel like I, I could come in and just max. Maximize because you understand where I'm at yeah. and what I can do, and I know where you at, and that synergy there. That that's the bro. type of stuff that works inside the mm -hmm. music. Bro, I've never had an office inside a record company. Mm -hmm. Ask me why. Cause you in the studio all the time. And, and then ask me why again. You don't want to. You don't want niggas to what you're doing. They don't play no music inside the fucking record company. Oh, Yo, you you said that. Why the fuck am they I not record company and I'm not hearing no they, music? They stopped. Wow. Because, because when we was at, at fucking Def Jam, everybody's doors was open. When niggas you went on niggas' dice, floor. The weed man was weed coming was, up there. Mm -hmm. Niggas was drinking. Niggas was vibed out. It was you like was getting a real records, life. am I lying? Yes, you was bro. coming past the office and you would hear Red Man be like, I need that beat, bro. Yep. Yo, mm. let me get that, bro. Bro, right, that's, facts. that's crazy. Like, just to see that, like, you said Red Man, too. A lot of, a part of my story, the niggas don't know, like, I lived in Central Islip with Eric Sermon for, like, a year. And what? I was, like, right before, Eric Sermon took me to Sylvia Room. I had the song Sexy Lady and all these different songs or whatever. He was trying to help put me on. Like, this was for Sexy Lady. I didn't have that song, but he believed in me and the guy that sang Sexy Lady. We all lived in this house. My production team, everybody or whatever for, like, probably, like, a year and a half was around him, Murray, Red, Autumn, you know what I'm saying? Like I always tell this story. Mm. Me, me and Berg, we was fucking around. We was in the studio in California. Me, him, Rockwild, the Faith Evans, mm -hmm. drunk as fuck, right? Going crazy. I see him that night. We were supposed to do songs. We didn't write. We didn't do not one <laughs> fucking song. I swear to God, because Faith had just went through her little thing, and I had licking weed. And I'm in the studio like, I can't pull this licking weed out around Faith. She said, pull that shit out. Nah, she, she with the shits, right? my nigga. Me and him bond that day. <laughs> yeah. Right? I don't see him no more, swear to God. <laughs> Next time I saw him, we in Miami. I'm fucked up. I don't even know it's him. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm fucked up. Go, I'm fucked yo. up, stumbling out of Prime 112, stumbling, nigga, like, stumbling. He like, yo, Ren, yo, Ren. I turn around like, who the fuck this nigga? Yeah. Fuck this nigga. Spin off, because he had mad niggas with him. Yo. I don't fuck with niggas that got mad niggas, and, and, and they call him. He had mad niggas, tall niggas, fat yeah, niggas. All them light-skinned oh, oh, niggas. Oh, I remember them niggas. niggas. Yeah. Right? So I'm looking at this nigga sure. like, you ain't calling me back, because then I'm wilding too. So I'm like, nigga ain't catching me off guard. Bro. I go home and smoke, and I say... That was fucking Berg. Mm -hmm. And I said, what the fuck is Berg doing down here in Miami? The very next day was when you when you was just putting out records. Somebody gave you money mm -hmm. and you was down there and niggas like, yo, he's not young Berg no more. Mm -hmm. He's this nigga now. Yep. And I said, yo, this nigga reinvented himself. Yep. And he ain't going to rap. That was he back in the day. Ill Brian nigga McKinney. Shit you pulled, Shout out bro. to Brian McKinney from the Minnesota Vikings. He was one of the niggas. That, That's who that gave you the money. Yeah, he brought me down to Miami. Salute to him. He didn't really give me no cash or whatever, yeah, okay. but he 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 gave me an opportunity. Like I was living in LA and I went through a bunch of shit. And like my overhead before I smoked a blunt or did anything was like 40, 50 grand. Cause I had like big crib. 
you know what I'm saying? Just a bunch of different expenses and a bunch of people living with me. Mm. So at that time, and I I never forget that crib. That crib was so crazy. Um, I think it was like might have been like Jamie Foxx's old crib or whatever. It's like on Van Alden or some shit in Woodland mm-hmm. Hills, and like the pool was in the front of the house. Like you pull up to the crib in and the, the driveway, and the pool is in front of you. Mm. We had some crazy times in that. And um, Brian McKinney hit me, and um, Rico Love was like the biggest at the time. Yeah, Rico you know Love, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. and I was like, I, I, I hit him recently on Twitter around that same time. Like, yo, I'm trying to write songs. I'm trying to do that. And he showed me some type of love. He like, I live in Miami. You up in Miami, holla at me. And then Brian McKinney was, hit me at the same time, kind of like simultaneously. Like, I'm starting my own record company. At that time, he was working, uh, playing for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. Had the big bag. And um, he like, shit, I'm going to move you to Miami. He put me at what's now known as the W in Brickle, Miami. Mm. Mm. Icon. He bought me a crib there for like a, a year and a half and just paid it off. Mm. And so, like, I was already having a, a couple dollars, but he just paid my whole living off, and I shut down my crib that I was leasing, renting in L.A., excuse me, and I moved to Miami. And that was, like, the start of the was change. Was that the birth of the change? The and right that, I was still, like, writing and producing. But, but your mind wasn't fucked up? Like, I got to go to this now. I, I was planning on doing this. That's what I was asking, This is my too, shit. Like, right. Your mind wasn't fucked up? Like, I got to transition to this shit now to make it? Nah, because I was always writing and producing my own records. If you think of any record that I ever came out with, even a record Sexy Canna with me and Ray J, like, I wrote and produced that record I forgot as well. you were on Sexy Canna. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that record is, is 10 times platinum. Mm-hmm. So it's like... I, like that shit just was going on. It was a part of my career, but I was just so young and just so outspoken and just being a nigga. Mm-hmm. It just at, at its highest capacity that I wasn't in interviews. Like, hey, I'm Youngberg. I wrote this record too. I produced this record. This, that, and the third. Like a lot of people don't know. Like we sitting here talking about shit. You talking about me? You Rock Wilder, Faith Evans. We talking about like Why Why Watson. I don't know if nobody familiar with him. He played the original rift on Car Wash. Like, he did so much shit. The wah-wah pedal from the guitar it's is... because of him? It's wah-wah, yeah. Mm. Or he did my whole album. Sexy Lady Remix with Jim Jones and all the niggas. He playing on that shit, nigga. Like, all that mm. stuff. Like, I was in tune with... I was in that type of lane mm-hmm. as an early, early student. No ID, Kanye, and Boogs did my demo like as a kid they got me signed to DMX so I was always in tune with just like the aesthetics and just the realness of the shit like bro like I'm not one of these niggas that's like I make commercial records but I'm still like a hip hop like I was mm-hmm. around and shit when hip hop head was the thing too you know what I'm saying so like my experiences and my knowledge on the game is extensive was you getting paid from the early shit did you get paid from the 10 times platinum oh, yeah. Ray J yeah what was your key because so many stories that we have niggas don't get paid I hated that shit. song let's be clear I hated that song Sexy Can what? I yeah. or, okay. so I explained really? that song yeah so look um, I got my deal with Epic Records mm-hmm. shout out to Billy J and um, we we did it we got the deal and we had our own Im- imprint. And how I got my deal was actually very interesting too because my weed man at the time was my manager. And we used to go to a club. He was like a club promoter at the same time. This back when TK was running Hollywood and like mm. all this, this is a different era. Like people got to remember like fuck Mondays and all this other mm. shit. Now Hollywood is like some epic shit. Mm-hmm. So I used to go to the club and I was probably like, I was a, I'm, I'm like 5'8 now. I was probably like 4'10", you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like 5 feet, little short nigga in a chinchilla, you know what I'm saying? Like in L.A., I don't know why I had a chinchilla on. It might have been winter in L.A. I just thought it was cold enough to be, I had that bitch on. But like I had the song Sexy Lady, and it just started blowing up in the clubs. Then from there, I went to Power 106. I told my whole life story. DJ Echo brought me in front of a mixer meeting at Power 106, and introduced me to E-Man, Felly Fell, and all them. I told my life story. I damn it cried, put the waterworks on, like niggas was trying to get to it. Like, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. And fucking <laughs> went for it. I cried. The waterworks work, nigga. What you talking about? Man, next thing I know, it shit started at Mix Show, and it was the number one record at Power 106, nigga, before I even had a deal. I remember so, that. Yeah. Epic Records came, that. got the deal. So fast forward, the song's out, it's blowing up, it's crazy. And, uh, so why you ain't like it, nigga? 
No, that record is cool. That's Sexy Lady. That's my first record. Okay, okay, okay. So now I'm working on my EP and I meet Ray J. I thought Ray J was the coolest nigga ever. He's fucking Brandy's brother. Fucking wait a minute with Lil' Kim. Like, mm -hmm. I always was a huge fan of him. So, like, this, this around the time he dropped the tape with Kim Kardashian and all that other shit. Like, he was just on fire. Yeah, he was on fire, then. And um, he pulled up on me because I wanted to do a song with him and Billy ended up introducing us. He did a song called My EP. And, um... Koch Records and Epic Records did something weird at the time that was like unheard of for like major record companies. I don't know, at least for They my, merged up, didn't they? Yeah. It felt like Koch, D and Shadow mm -hmm. worked radio for all the urban artists at Epic because Epic didn't really have an urban department. Hey, you say I talk too much? Yo, nigga. He you said just said I one of those. Nigga, we gotta have to take I that out the much. footage. No, he don't. No, he oh, don't. Oh, okay. Go, go. Whoa. But this is like, this is like, he this said, is, I yo, talk too much. Is that crazy? You, nigga, you say he don't want to say niggas in power right now. Yo. I just said that before, so I ain't mad. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. So they they were, it's it's yeah, they were working records for Epic Records. They had formed some sort of partnership, mm. and um, uh, it was me, Sean Kingston, mm -hmm. Nipsey Hussle. That's cinematic. That pretty, yeah, like that Johnny was very, Shipes. All that. that was very early. Yeah, yeah, like and uh, shout out. Yeah, I think Jim McDaniel's was around Johnny Shipes at that time mm -hmm. or whatever. And um, from there, it was pretty much like. Ray J had a song, and I think Ray J initially put Styles P on Sexy Can I. Really? Mm -hmm. I, the powers that be somewhat, I, I, someone may mention that it might be great for me to be on a record. Okay. So when they brought me the record, Billy brought it to me. I was with Billy and Cap One or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow, Cap and, One. And we were in Miami, mm -hmm. and um, we went from the, like, I hated the record because, like, I felt like I was the sexiest nigga in the world. I'm like, I just dropped Sexy Lady and I'm gonna come with Sexy Can I? I understand. I was got bugging because I, no, I said the same thing. I said, he got two fucking sexy records. Yeah, I'm like, and pulled it off. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is crazy for Berg to be yeah, doing this shit. So, like, fucking, um, we walk, I'll never forget it. Like, we walk from the Lowe's Hotel, I believe, to Wet Willie's. Mm -hmm. And, um, me and Cap and, and Billy, we just talking shit, and me and Cap were throwing bars around, just saying like whatever little shit to each other. And we got to Wet Willie's, so I'm just like, I ain't fucking with this record. And um, they like, man, studio set up at Circle House, man, just go in there and do it. Billy told me that shit, and I'm like, all right, fuck it. We went to Circle House, and um, that was my first time meeting Pleasure P. I think Pleasure P was in a Bentley or something like that, and uh, Pretty Ricky was on fire at the time. Mm -hmm. I was a super fan of him. And that nigga uh, put me in a car with him, and like he introduced me to ecstasy. That was the first time I took ecstasy. He like, man, take this shit. I'm like, what? <laughs> what you say, Esso? That's the music business. That's the most beautifulest drug yeah. ever invented. I'm like, what is this? Keep that shit away from me, God. Yeah. So he gave me the X pill. I took it. And then I never forget, it's a crazy moment at Circle House. Uh, fucking um, Pitbull was there. And like I was so lit off the shit, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm like gas and pit bull up, like yo, like take X C. Like no, no, I'm from Miami. <laughs> he like I, if I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna get to it. I know how he get to it, so yeah, you, know. you ain't gotta say how so, he get to it. So fucking um, I end up doing it, doing a record. Then I lay like a, a rough on it, did a bunch of songs, and then me and Pleasure collaborated on a bunch of songs that night. From there, I went back to L. A. And I'll never forget this shit. We finished the song, got Encore Studio, me and Ray J. And fucking, um, it was weird because like uh, the girl Cash that sang the business was like with me and then Tierra Marie was with Ray. So he come in. Ray was in a different bag then. Oh, Ray, he was different. Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, Clue, I remember, yeah. I remember going to the club you, with yeah. him and Hold on, what you about to say? Yo, my dog Ray come in the studio, <laughs> take the gun off his hip, put it on the counter, you know what I'm saying? We in there, we rolling up big blunts, you know what I'm saying? Smoking, we're doing what we doing. We finishing the song. And he like, uh, that's your girl? He pulled me to the side, like, that's your girl? I'm like, no, nah, that's my artist. You know what I'm saying? I'm working with it. Like, you cool, do whatever you want to do. I'm thinking he want to holler at her. But it's he, I didn't know it was Tierra Marie at the time, too, that was with him. I'm like, but ain't you got a girl with you or whatever? Like, no, nah, just chill. I ain't trying to holler at her. I'm like trying to get in my zone. And I think he had just did that. He did like a vivid deal with like the porn company or whatever like yeah. after the Kim Kardashian shit. So the nigga was like, yo, I just want to get my vibe. Like, is it cool if I play these? And showed it to me and 
uh, casher. And what's these? It's, it's porno <laughs> DVDs. Yo, this a <laughs> ill nigga. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> gun on the board, <laughs> porno <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> no. So I think I think we had encore or chalice or one of them, and like yeah, like he cut the porn DVDs on, and niggas was in there working. We finished the song. My favorite memory of this shit was like he was in there like. I'm trying to do my Stevie. I need to get my Stevie Wonder off, bro. <laughs> I'm, like, Yo. I'm like, so he finishing the song and he got to run like, can I just have some fun? Mm-hmm. He's like, can I just have some fun? Like in his Ray J voice. I'm like, Yo. And Tierra Marie was like, clowning them like ah nigga that ain't it she was going in on them niggas and that turned up and we finished the song and that that was the story of Sexy Can I. Now fast forward I got my song to business. After that they didn't turn me on to the ecstasy, right? So, I'm around like Murder Inc. lifestyle. Like, I seen all that shit. I never tried it. So now I'm just like, damn, like, this yeah. how Ja Rule was making all these hits. It opened up a whole different level of dimension. Like, what's ja, going on? Ja was, was a making different hits. Vibe, yo. See, ja and Gunner used to pick me up in the morning and be like, we all lived in Jersey. Yeah. Gutter would get Ja. Come scoop me up from my crib. I lived in fucking Jefferson. It was 2210 or fucking Newport Parkway. I won't ever forget it. Nigga, come get me every day. A job be in the backseat. Yo, I got it's something in the cup for you. Fuck's in the cup. Yo, look in the cup. Ecstasy. Double stack, nigga. Nine in the morning, nigga. Double stack in the joint. I'm like, yo, I'm scared. I'm getting chills on my arm. I'll be scared to use the drugs. Right. I ain't gonna lie. I'm breaking it up a little shit. Next, next thing we go, we go into the fucking shit. I'll be like, yo, this is the most beautifulest drug in the world. Yeah. I love everybody on this drug. Nigga. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Niggas, you can't stand. You be like, but you want to smoke, my nigga? And that's what I said. I got to leave this fucking drug See, alone. See, Ja, ja probably wait and go to sleep for the night before. Like, ja never, you ja never... Yeah. Ja Rule never went to sleep. Yeah. He was one of the hardest working nigga. When 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 he had his run, I ain't never seen niggas work that hard like that. Mm. No matter yeah. what he did, he, he he was the first nigga to go to the club, go to the studio, go to the club, go back to the studio yeah. and work and be a Def Jam. Because Def Jam was a club back then, mm-hmm. am I lying? Oh, if, really? yo, if, if you didn't come to the label, you was trash. Yeah. Everybody was pulling up. Hove was pulling up, nigga. Every day by noon, everybody got to come inside the building. They smoking on 19. They smoking on 20. Mm-hmm. These niggas is over here. They making money. Don't don't fuck with them. Bird coming through. X coming through. Going right. crazy. Foxy. It was the club. It, it was where you went to actually. When you, when you got your deal, you was like, I can go in the building now. Bro, I was smoked out on 20. <laughs> like the weed, man. This back in the day, like. Hot was the weed, man, nigga. Yeah, Hakeem. Hakeem Green. What? Nigga, shout, 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 shout out. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> like, nigga, he put me on the yeah, pit. Yeah, like, hot weed, man. Early, like, yeah. the, the clear jars, the yes. cubes, bro. The cube, he yeah. had the bag. Yes, bro. Yes, Anybody nigga, come on, from stop. that era, they know what's going Hakeem, on. Hakeem, shout out to Hakeem, Shout out to Hak, man. Word up. Damn, Hakeem. We so, were. <laughs> See, this how you know niggas is really in this shit. For real, for real. So fucking, mm-hmm. to me, like, the ecstasy pill was like the limitless pill back in the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all seen that movie called Limitless? Yeah. Like, you it was one of them. No, nah, I'm, I'm sipping. I told you I got a long you day. You sipping that so, shit. With that being said, I did the song, The Business, with the with the girl, Kasha, that was working with me. I actually met her in my dog, my A&R on my team over there, K. Smith video, who's Will Smith nephew. Mm-hmm. Like, shit, he was an artist at the time, and I met the girl on the shoot. And um, we took ecstasy, and we went in the studio, and I swear I did that song, The Business, in one take. I went in the studio. I did the whole song, the whole one. The first take is the whole song. There's no backgrounds and no stacks. I sang her part. She went back there and re-sang it. So at that point now, we got Sexy Can I and this song I made off the of ecstasy that I think is really good too. So um, I go to Charlie Walk. Mm. Charlie. He, he, he's saying names that people, you can't even get to Charlie mm-hmm. Walk. Mm. They, you know what I'm saying? Especially at that time, Charlie was the president of Sony at that time, right? Yep. So he's he's the CEO of the company. Mm-hmm. And at that point, uh, they're pressuring me. They're like, yo, it's Ray J record. I guess D and and Shadow then went and did they due diligence. And they like, this bitch finna go. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, hell no. I'm finna be right, said Fred. I'm finna be the sexiest nigga in America. I'm coming off sexy lady, the sexy can I. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is going on? So Charlie Walk might have been higher than me. 
at that point. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I go see Charlie. He in his bag. I swear to God, I can't make this shit up. And I love Charlie. And it's just a part of the shit that's going to come out in my book or my movie, whatever. That's the good. man that's is, good. he has a grand piano in his fucking uh, office at Epic. He's dancing on top of the grand piano. And Charlie is like a short dancer. He's very short. Yeah. He's so like 5'1", he's 5'2". Five five yeah, he's, he's shorter short. Us. He's short. So he's <laughs> dancing on top of the grand piano playing Sexy Kenna. You're like, this is going to be the biggest fucking record of your career. It's going to be one of the biggest records of your career. I'm like, all right. So we chilling. We we take some shots or whatever. We get in a vibe. And he's like selling me on a record. I'm like, yo, the way I'm going to do this record, man, I want to change. You got to make me an epic record, Shane. Like, <laughs> make me an epic record, Shane. Call Jason of Beverly Hills. He like, that's all it's going to take? I'm like, yeah. Call Jason of Beverly Hills. Nigga, he sent whatever. He spoke to Charlie Walk. Nigga, boom, they made me an epic record chain and Sexy Ken, I came out. That's how it happens, don't it? Don't you got to you gotta be prepared for when it goes on? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everybody thinks that you're just going to run, 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 and shit's going to go on. But it happens when you don't expect it. That was a record that you didn't even fucking like. Nope. You didn't vibe to it in, nope. in fucking Miami. But that Circle those. House, if you ever want to catch a vibe, this is a hint. Go to the Circle House in Miami. It'll change your fucking life. Mm-hmm. I seen Kelly Rowland come out of a fucking studio and jump in the pool. I was sold after that. I like Get that. out the pool and go back to work inside the hut, inside the studio. Big D was running that shit. Big D had it going crazy there. Paul, you want to know what's crazy? The producer. Full circle. That A room of Circle House is my room now, and it's been that's that way crazy. Mm. That way. Yeah. That's crazy. Yo, what's a money commandment that you live by? Meaning something that you do to keep money inside your pocket. Studio nigga, bro. That's it. So even when I think I ain't making money, I'm making money. That's what a lot of people and the artists and songwriters don't know. Like, it's a lesson I learned in the game. Like, even when it don't look like you making money, you making money. Money. You're going to get it back. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? As long as what you're doing is quality and you putting them hours in. Like, like I said, I don't got no personal life. I ain't got no hoes. I ain't got no How do you feel about that? Do you think, do you get lonely? Yeah, when holidays come around. But I'm in a fucking... Mm -hmm. Four or five million dollar house that I paid for myself. But the, but but that but does that matter when you ain't got nobody to share it with when it's all when it all busts down? Shit, when January second, third come back and everybody get back to work, shit, it'd be about over. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's real shit. I think I'm the only one to be thinking about that because I swear to God, when I'm outside, mm-hmm. niggas is like, yo. You nigga, you married, son, and you popping like this, and this is going crazy. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling now. I feel like I, I didn't fucking ran around. I did everything that I want to do, and I just like to be around people that I like to be around, and that's very few niggas. You don't deal with that, uh, yeah? I don't be around no niggas. Yeah, okay, but you said I be with everybody. I said the same thing you said. No, 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 you no. be with everybody too. No, no, in a studio. I be with everybody. Or working. Exactly. But to me, like, this was fucked up about the whole situation, right? When I went to rebuild my career, nobody told me that you was going to have to sacrifice all these different things or whatever. Like, you work so hard, and when you're doing it in real time, it's hard to really, like, grasp a hold of what you're really losing out of. So then you're not looking at it, the fact that it's like, man, like, where's my real friendships? Where's my real thing? Like, Mm. My guys got kids now. I don't have kids. Like, maybe they should be growing up together, sharing these experiences. And then Instagram reminds you of shit like that when you get to see different things of that nature. But then on the other side of things, it's like, and them niggas ain't happy. And neither am I. But shit, I'm lit up. So shit, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be not happy. You speaking this facts. shit. You know what I'm saying? Niggas <laughs> miserable. I was you know saying that. Like, nigga, facts. He always tell me that. He be like, yo, with all the shit you going through, words of mother, you fucking lit. So who gives a fuck about what's going on right I, now? I, I, yo, I was telling him, out of all the people I know that's married, it's only one nigga who don't complain about his marriage. And he's worth $50 million. Yeah. So that's his equalizer. Every other nigga complains about their marriage. That's a fact. Rich niggas, doctors, bum niggas, bus that's drivers. Fact. Can I use the bathroom when we come back? No, uh, we done. Uh, 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 we, we, can done? Done. we can get to Ronnie. We can close out and shit. Right, cool. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm so. waiting for your Netflix movie, man. 
Because right. your life story, <laughs> nigga, we even from even when got, you was 15. We ain't even got into all that. That's a whole long, no, we spoke, long, yeah, yeah, yeah. long yeah, yeah. I know. But yeah, we done spoke about yeah. that shit before. Mm-hmm. We did it in this capacity. But like, man, like. We don't never have enough time to talk to people. So yeah, we don't. I really want to just like put out there to the world, like, man, don't look at like a lot of times previously when I would do interviews, like it would really be like chip on shoulder, flossing. You know what I'm saying? Like just being a nigga. Mm-hmm. You ain't gotta be that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's time for that. It's it's a time for it not to be, but when the camera's on, I just want to inspire the next motherfucker to come their way. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Want to show them that shit possible and like actually want to say like Man, like, y'all done watch me grow up in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. Like, my first single as Young Berg was 17 years ago. When I came out with DMX, it's over 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's like, from now to being 37 years old, you can watch the trials and tribulations, and you can end up here and use it as inspiration. Like, I was always one of them niggas that wanted to see the album with the DVDs in the back and know how they made the records and know, how, like, yo, this is a full journey. This is something that y'all can grab a hold to and just take the ride with me and, and also take the ride with the artists and everybody that I'm influencing because not only is it making sound people, but it's a lot of writers and producers in the game that I've been able to be a blessing to. And I'm just blessed to be a blessing at this point, you know? One thing you love about the music business, one thing you hate about the music business. What I, what I always love from the beginning is that you can have an idea as mm-hmm. a creative, go to the studio with nothing, mm-hmm. and leave with something tangible that you could play and that you could resonate with and vibe that could possibly impact the world when you're done with it at the end of the day. And that don't matter if you're the rapper, if you're the manager, if you're the A&R. We all like connected really, to it. Everybody, it's everybody's baby. We all did point. that motherfucking record. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I hate about the music business is that the way it could just like rinse you. You know what I'm saying? Like Swallow you, you up and spit you out. And be gone. You know what I'm saying? And I just want to encourage people that I feel like the music business is going through a different, like, it's in a weird spot right now, but like certain things gonna come back and like certain elements are gonna really happen. But I just encourage everybody that's new talent just to like be authentic and just be like, just make the best records. Do man. they know how to be authentic? Shit, hell yeah. Niggas was being too authentic, nigga, about two years ago and we see what the fuck was going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. So like shit, like I want niggas to to make the best records, man. Move the people with the music, man. Like I kind of would like to, to tell new talent too, like, dial, if you really that cold, just dial back a little bit. Everybody ain't got to be in your business, man. Don't follow trends. Like, Mystique might come back in style. You know what I'm saying? Mystique like, is in style. That's shit. why you surviving. That's why I'm fucking surviving. Shit, That's why but, surviving. but what about Chris Sean Rock? This, this lady going, well, shout out to Blueface. I think Blueface might be the marketer of the year of mm-hmm. 2023. Mm. He nigga that could put his cell phone put another girl on, then put his baby mama on. Mm-hmm. Like, watching that, like, you know he got a joint venture with Columbia yes, Records for his baby I mama. I saw it. Wow. I saw it with that record. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and Barbie or something? Yeah. Shit, like Barbie, something like that? Hey. He's mm-hmm. very, he's very, he's very, um... He's smart. He's very and smart. And that's the thing he's that people... Tactical. But see, but those people, right, you don't look at him as being smart. That's how he could get you. See, people didn't think that what we was doing, that we was going to be smart, high, and they thought we was just talented. But mm. once you learn how to use your relationships, you learn how to market yourself, you learn how to put things together, then they start realizing what you bring to the table. It's good to be able to sneak up on them. This is my point, though. If he wasn't so much of a nigga, it might not have worked for him. But if he wasn't so much of a nigga, he might be bigger. Further. Than... Catch so 22. It, yeah, it's one of them. Point taken. Who? Ronnie. Hitmaker. They saying they saying we about to get a bag off you, man. Uh, oh, you, you, you gotta talk about surprise, oh, man. Yeah, you you you, you <laughs> supposed to say hell yeah, yeah, yeah nigga. nigga. Man, we, listen, man, come on, it's up, it's lit. Don't come up here being modest and shit. Telling people what you do. So, so I heard oh. you singing shit. It ain't no singers out right now. Yeah. Yeah. So what the hell you gonna do to make people want to hear you sing, nigga? Bringing the whole wave back. Do you rap too? Nah. So just an R and B nigga. So you wrote on nigga shit, right? Yeah, for so sure. So who the hell you wrote for? You better tell these niggas what you did. Didn't you see your man just yeah, say he, he ain't did, never he tell people what he did? As a fact, I mean, we can get into it. You know, shout out to Hit, man. He put me in a position to really be able to take my talent elsewhere. You know, got me an opportunity to be on Chris' album. Okay. Eric mm. Bellinger, Lady London featuring Jeremiah. Tank, Salute. And a lot more people, man. Okay. Those so you, 
So you got some money there. I see you got the designer shoes on and shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, so you got a couple dollars. You got a couple bitches to go with your couple dollars too? Or you I mean, can't say? Or you married? Nah, we can, we can take it there. Right oh, you we better. Can oh, talk. he got yeah. enough there. We can talk about I, it. I can talk crazy because you talk young. Hold on, you can, young. I can go crazy. You got bitches it. to go with the money or not? And I'm glad you said that. Okay. If a nigga tell you he do R&B, you expect that, right? Yes. Not, not, nothing less, right? If you go to an R&B nigga show, what you expect to see? Nothing I'm going to tell this. you some shit, right? Mm. We was there. What's the shit? Salsa con fuego, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trey Song sees me. I, I actually put Trey on. You know what I'm saying? I'm the reason why the whole world got Trey Songs, okay? And he saw me from the shit. So he's like, yo, Rand, you doing your shit. Let me come give you a hug. Let me fuck with you. Nobody knew it was him, right? He come through. He hugged me, big me up, make me the superstar of the section. Mm. The, the chicks is in there looking like, he said they was nervous. The way I read it, no, they, they was, was like, I ain't fucking with this nigga. He nah, got, they all, were this nervous, he got they, all this controversy with this yeah. nigga, right? This is real shit. That nigga, I'm getting chills on my arm, right? That nigga hit the stage. Nobody gave a fuck. Every broad in there. Was it like 2,000 people in yeah, there? Yeah, phones was going word hammer. Word for word. Man. Every Trey song, but let me song tell you that why, came on. Let me tell you why Trey's an ill motherfucker, Ronnie. And Berg's gonna appreciate this ill nigga shit. He wasn't supposed to be there. Guess who's you, supposed to be there? You know who's supposed to guess, perform? Take one while, guess what? RB nigga's supposed to be there. Yeah. Take one guess. Damn. This is why, and Trey, this is a troll move by Trey. <laughs> one guess. Right. You ain't guess yet, nigga. I can't take that guess. Yeah, no, Jacquees. Jacquees was on the bill. So he came <laughs> early to perform. And, and then he left. Now Jacquees got to go follow that Jacquees up. Jacquees ain't even show up. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it was Honey Baby <laughs> and Jacquees. <laughs> nigga, it's like recent. Sunday, <laughs> nigga. The fuck you talking about? <laughs> Sunday, nigga. He pulled the nigga dreads out yo, yo, and then yo, fucked yo. his back He up. didn't even, nobody knew Trey was there. He tells me, he's like, yo, your man's over yeah. there. I said, I ain't going over nobody there. Nobody saw him. He be bodyguarded yeah. up and everybody acting yeah. crazy. Them <laughs> niggas don't know I know. I stay over there. I'm just on top of the shit going nuts. How I do? Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. He he fucking see me and that's when a nigga come over there. Nobody knew he was there. Sunday but, like it was two days ago. Two days During ago, the and day. niggas told me when we was walking in, niggas like, you know Trey gonna be here, and I was like, Trey gonna be here. I said, then he just have a fight with Jacquees, and Jacquees is on the, the headliner. That he Jacquees was the headliner, nigga, and Trey is over in the fucking corner, and when he hit the stage, I swear to God. Nobody give a fuck about controversy. None of that girls shit. Girls was ready to throw panties on the stage. The same girls that was fronting on him jumped out the VIP. Am I lying? Yeah. Jumped out, climbed out the yeah. VIP, nigga. Let me tell you how ill of an R&B Trey is. This is big girl. Like, she's big. So instead of having her walk around to get back in the VIP, he, he pushed, pushed her, her up. up over, like, so this I little mountain of couches. Because she climbed over the couch. She was yeah. too big to get back. Over, you gotta be nigga. in the gym to lift them sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So, 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 when, when, when we ask you the question, you say you expect it. Yeah, we expect it. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, you gotta I, have some Nigga, you ain't grow to. all that hair just to not do this. Yeah, you yeah, can't be in the music business <laughs> and not have no bitches, nigga. Your manager gotta have bitches. <laughs> Your homeboy. If y'all niggas yeah. ain't got no bitches, you not an R&B singer, my nigga. Yeah, it ain't believable. I can't, you know, you can't listen to my music and try to believe what I'm saying after that. That's you, real shit you, know you just I mean? said right there. Yeah, it's facts. I'm so saying what's tour wild. life like? Man, it's Is fun. you we, fucking on tour or not? Nah? Man, let's just know we bringing back pandemonium vibes. <laughs> Is you <laughs> fucking know? on tour yeah, or listen, not? You gotta understand, I met him when he was a teenager. Burn, and he lived up to the movie. Yo, yeah. is this nigga fucking so on you know, I, If I'm with him all the time, man, it's only right that I got to. Oh, my man! <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, but nah, no, George, we're just having fun George with this. George is a great experience, though. Okay. You know, nah, that's amazing. what's up. It changes your life on, on some real shit. It changes your life when you travel. I'm from yeah. the hood. I thought California was fake. I say this on camera. People laugh at me. Right? I thought it was really fake when I I, I started out as a basketball player. So when you watching the games, you watching Magic Johnson, they like they coming out. It's fucking daylight. How it's dark in New York City. Mm -hmm. I was like, this shit is fake. When I landed in California in 1999, I said, oh shit, this shit is real, and it changed my mind and it changed my life. From that point, I, I the weed was way different. It was like. <laughs> Oh my God, the girls was way different. They looked different. They dressed it. They had Uggs on back in the days with fucking um, sweatpants and shit. Before the shit was even on the East yeah, Coast, they was yeah. wearing Uggs, mm -hmm. nigga. So I'm living a whole different lifestyle out there, and it made me want to see the world. 
And I think seeing the world and swerving with different people with money and different things, that's what changed my life. It changed me from a hood nigga to a nigga who was now worldly, which was different. Because when I'm coming home, I'm like, this is trash. This nigga from Long Island, though. In New York, nigga. Yeah, I know, wow. I know. That's yeah, why, that's right. what's, what's 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 what I'm saying. Suffolk or Nassau? Nassau. Okay, you close, man. Oh, oh, you yeah, close yeah, to Queens. Yeah. 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 Uh, like but like minutes. Hempstead? Yeah, Hempstead, oh. you and Dirt Roosevelt, I live. Oh, you Nassau. you from the, you by the Velt? Oh, you a violent nigga. So how you meet this yeah. nigga? Yeah. Man, shouts to Krishan, man. Um, Who is know. Krishan? Because I thought you were talking about Krishan Rock. Who's this other Krishan? Krishan is yeah. the evil genius. Okay. <laughs> mm. yeah. all right. Jimmy Jam to my table. Okay, all right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. 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 Fair enough.